we're going to be uh, learning today about the Birchas HaChamo, bracha that we make, we recite once every 28 years. Um, and uh, as well as the uh, other, cer certain other brachas as well, on uh, seeing the ocean and so on. So we're going to begin... Well, let, let's go over a little of what we did yes, uh, Friday. So we spoke about on Friday that uh, the brokim was lightning, and um, we spoke about a tempest, the bracha uh, for ruchos, bracha for ra'amim, thunder. So the Gemara was asking, what does thunder come from? And it had different uh, understandings. And then the Gemara concluded, the reason for the sound of thunder was because the lightning, uh, it, it hits a cloud and it causes rain to come. And uh, the Gemara had mentioned the reason why it causes rain to come when, it, when the thunder, when the lightning hits the cloud uh, is because it breaks the it shatters the um the icicles the 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 uh the hail shatters the hail and uh, that's what's causing this noise of the thunder so the gemara understands that that's the reason for thunder then the gemara mentions that uh the a tempest like a windstorm is um it, it never occurs at night or it does occur it doesn't start it the Gemara says, what do you mean it does occur at night? So the Gemara answers, no, it really it has to start by day. And, um, and it also says that it never happens for two hours in a row. The Gemara says, what do you mean? We do see that it does happen two hours in a row. The Gemara answered that it, uh, it has some type of a break in the middle. It has stops. It's, it, it, it has a little, uh, it lets, lets up a, a drop in the middle or something. And then the Gemara mentioned that lightning, a person says a bracha, Brakim, Brakim is lightning. He says, Gemara says, What's Brakim? The Gemara answers, Barka. So it seems that the Gemara is saying that it doesn't have to be uh, more than one, even one light, lightning bolt is enough to say the Bracha. And then the Gemara mentioned about uh, certain things are bad signs, dangerous. Um, if they happen, during the night. And what is that? If there's only one lightning, if it's a white lightning, if it's a Yaruk lightning, Yaruk is either yellow or green. So uh, these things are bad. So if you have two uh, clouds that uh, they, they bang into each other, uh, these are considered, then uh, there was in one other case, Anani Sulk, the Sulkan Bekeren Ma'aravis, Vasian Bekeren Dremis. They come up at the western corner, and, um, and then come at the uh, southern corner. So, if you have any of these things happen, it's considered like a a, a dangerous thing. And the Gemara says, "So, what, what, what are you telling us?" And my answer is to say daven. You should daven for mercy from Hashem. And then the Gemara says, "This applies only by." By night, by day, it's not a problem. The Gemara also mentioned another point that by day, you know, that morning clouds are meaningless. And then the Gemara says, what do you mean they're meaningless? It, it does have some meaning that the, all the produce is going to be cheaper. There's going to be abundance. The Gemara answered that it depends if it's thick clouds or thin clouds. Uh, the, the thin clouds are meaningless. But the thick clouds, that means that's very significant. Um and uh, then the Gemara said that, uh, that what is the reason why Hashem created thunder? It's in order to straighten out the Akmumis Shabalev. Akmumis Shabalev is the crookedness uh, uh, of the heart. And, um, and then the Gemara mentioned that a person sees a Keshes. He has to fall. Uh, he, should, he should bow down. Uh, uh, in front of it because somehow the uh, Keshes is symbolic of the um, uh, of Hashem and through bowing before Hashem and uh, Rashi says Hashem. 
it uh, uh, symbolizes, it shows the glory of Hashem, the 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 the, the rainbow. So uh, and then the Gemara said in Marava in the west, the west would mean in Eretz Yisrael, because Eretz Yisrael is west of Babylon. It says they would never allow, so they would curse, lighty Allah, literally lighty means to curse. They would curse uh, someone who does that, bows down for towards a kesha, towards a rainbow. And But you do say a bracha, and then the Gemara said, what bracha do you say? Either zeichar ha or uh, there was a brisa that said, neman bevisa v'kai ma'amorai, and Rav Papa says, let's just say them all. Zeichar ha neman bevrisa v'kai Hashem keeps his word, he keeps his treaty, that he's not going to destroy the world. And that is the um, that is the law of a uh, person sees a rainbow. There is a bracha that we recite. Now, um, a rainbow is considered a bad sign, negative sign, at least according to, and, uh, um, uh, but it is also a sign that Hashem is not destroying Hashem is keeping his word and not just, but it means Hashem is, so to speak, angry with the world. He wants to destroy the world, but he doesn't because he made a promise. Uh, the, the next Gemara is explaining the Mishnah, Al Haharim Bi Al So we're going to learn this inside. It is eight lines from the bottom of the page. We're on 59A, eight lines from the bottom. Al Haharim Bi Al on the mountains and on the hills. Of course, the, this means when there are exceptional mountains and hills, you can recite the bracha, Oisei Masei Bereshis. Hashem does, the, makes the, the, the creation, the, the, the doings, the Maisei Bereshis, the act of creation. And what we're thanking Hashem for is the unique creations that Hashem created, the big, huge mountains and huge hills. So the Gemara asks, Atu kol hanida maron, Ad hashto, uh, all those that we s- mentioned until now, are they lav mice and bereshes then, or they are not um, acts of creation? Um, which uh, it's b- basically referring to the the uh, uh, windstorm and the thunder and the lightning and all those other things are also works of creation. That Hashem created, and um, if you look back in the Mishnah, it mentioned Zikin, Zvois, the the earthquake. The Zikin was the shooting star. Zvois was the earthquake. Ra'amim, thunder, ruchais, wind, brakim, lightning. So on all these, we said Koychok Barasam Aliyolim. Said a bracha that His strength fills the world, and on mountains, on hills, on yamim. Uh, rivers, uh, uh, oceans, and Naharais rivers, and Midbarais deserts, you say, Oysa Maisa Bereshis. So the asked, what about the previous cases? They're also works of creation. Hashem created the thunder and lightning and earthquakes, and these are also uh, the wind. They're works of creation, shooting stars. So the Gemara answers that, um, well, the Gemara brings a Pasuk that says, Vaksiv brakim la mater also. It says that he made lightning for the rain. It's part of the creation. So the Gemara answers that, Amar Abaye kroich utni. Abaye says, sandwich it together and uh, learn it as such, which means uh, you would recite both of these brachas um, for the earlier cases and um, and for all the cases, you, you learn both. In other words, join them all together and you say both brachas on everything. Rashi says, Bekulhu on all of them, Baruch Haisa Bereshus, Ubaruch Bava, do it all in one um, group. The al kulam brachas halala. You would say the both these brachas on all of these cases. So he's basically 
editing the Mishnah drop, and he's saying that they don't look at it as if they're two separate entities, really put them together, join them all together, and say both brachas on each one of these things that happens. Rava argues, Rava Amar Rava says, Hasam Mevarech Tarti, over there you can recite both, Baruch Shekoychoy Malay Oilam Vaisam Isaac Rashtis, you say the blessing that blessed is Hashem, that is Koyach, his strength fills the world, and he did the work of creation. But Hacha here, in the case of the Hadrim uh, Ugvois, the mountains, the valleys, uh, these type of things, you just say, Oisa Maisa Bereshis Ika, She Koychoy Mali Oilam Leka, you cannot say the Bracha Koychoy Ugvorase Mali Oilam, you can only say the Bracha Oisa Maisa Bereshis, and the reason is, because lightning is not limited to one place, but uh, a mountain is limited to one place. And therefore, for the lightning, it's koichai v'rasei, and the thunder is, is all around, is, his strength is around, is all entire world filled, is filled with his strength. But the mountain, the one, the mountain that you're seeing is, um, is only in one place, so you can't say the bracha koichai v'rasei malei oilam that his koyach is fills the world from this mountain. Now, uh, there is a discussion among the commentaries here. What is Rava exactly saying for the other cases? Does he mean you have to say both? Or does he mean one or the other? So Tysus over here emphasizes that it's oi ha, oi ha. Oi hai, oi hai either this bracha or that bracha. You could say either one. So if you want to say on uh, lightning, fine. You want to say on lightning, you could do that as well. And um, and that's the the final halacha follows Rava. And that you could theoretically say uh, the bracha, these brachas, they're interchangeable. You don't say both, but you say one or the other. And it's a min, the minog is to say on lightning, we say, Oisa Maisa Bereshis, Hashem creates the work of the work of creation. And on, um, on thunder, we say, His strength fills the world. And it would, it would seem that it's connected to the fact that he, that it says, Brokim La Mater Asa, that he created lightning bolts for the rain. So it sort of fits, I guess, the, the Pasuk where it mentions that Hashem's creation was lightning. Lightning was part of the creation that uh, it reminds us it's Isa Maisa Bereshis, and uh, you would say the bracha for creation um, um, for the lightning, and Koychog Bras Maliyolam for the thunder. Uh, and and that's, that's, the com- that's the common minog. Um, but there, there is an opinion that according to Rava, you should say both brachas, for uh, to brought in the rivet that you would say both brachas for those item those things. The um, okay, the Gemara continues, it, it, and the the reason why there's a machlek is because it's a little vague in, in the actual uh, the actual wording is a little vague. It says hasam um, mevarich tarti over there. You say both. He doesn't say karuch kruch. Usni well kruch usni is you join. Rabbi said Kruchusni means join both the entire paragraphs you should join together. Hasam um, Avarech Tarti is he says over there, you say you 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 say both. Um, I guess it's a, it's unclear um, um, if it, if it's interesting. Tysus' is Girsa is the the way Tysus has the text, it doesn't say Tarti. It says, Hasa Mavarech Shakoichuk Varasai Malayolam Vitoisa Maisa Bereshis. So the Vav is uh, sometimes used to mean the word and, and sometimes the Vav is used to mean or. So I guess maybe it has, it has to do with maybe the Girsa, because uh, the wording that we have in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Gemara is Hasa Mavarech Tarti, which maybe does sound like you should say both. Hasa Mavarech Tarti. Uh, but uh, um, 
the uh, but Taisus has a gear so Oisa Maisa Bracious. He doesn't have the word Karti. He has the word Oisa Maisa Bracious and um and uh and, and that's the um uh, that's the hal- the halacha follows Taisus that you don't say both. If you just see lightning, you would only say one of those brachas. You wouldn't say you wouldn't say the bracha on both. And if you look in Shulchan Aruch, Shulchan Aruch, um, uh, um, I'll call Echad Me'elo Aimer Barach Hadashem Al Kenam Al Chelam Asim Asiv Reishis Vim Yirtse Yomer. If you want to say, you could say Barach Hadashem Al Kenam Al Chelam Shkoychuk Verasim Maliyom. So it, it gives you like the the option. It leaves it vague. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the machlekes of the commentaries over here, um, and we we follow the Taisus's uh, view, uh, which is basically the view of the Rif and the, the Rush and the Rambam. They all seem to follow that view. And uh, the um, the Gemara continues and uh, says, "I'm Rabbi Shua Ben Levi." Rabbi Shua Ben Levi says, "Raya Rakib Tarasa Imer Baruch Yisab Bereishis." If a person sees the sky in its clearness in its purity, he says, "Oisa Maise Oisa Bereishis." Now, what does that mean? Um, Means that uh, there's no there's no clouds. He sees it. Um, he sees it, and it looks very clear. Wait, did I? I think I skipped the word. I skipped the line. Um, did I say that? Did I translate that? Here, uh, here it's. Uh, you have, but in other words, with the mountains, the valleys, you do have Oisa, you have Maisabracious, you don't have oh, yeah, I think I translated. Okay, fine. Okay, again, Um Rabbi Shoban Levi, Rabbi Shoban Levi says, if a person sees the sky in its in its uh, purity, you say this bracha of Oisa Maisabracious, Amos, when you say it, Amr Abaya, Baisis, Yasi Mitra Kule Lelia, that it's not always. It's this, it is a uh, qualification to this ruling. That is when rain came all night, of Safra Asa Istana in the, the morning came Istana. Rashi over here says Istana is a ruach tsoinis, a northern wind, the northern wind that blows it all night from midnight to the morning. So that that wind uh, the morning came this 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 wind, Magalya Lulashmaya and it uh, it revealed it opened it made made visible the heavens meaning it pushed aside the 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 clouds, so therefore you would say, um, I say, Baruch, I say, my say, voracious. And what that means is that when Hashem created the world, there weren't clouds. It was created without clouds, and maybe clouds came after, or he created clouds after, but uh, the initial purity of the creation was without the clouds. Yes, uh, Ben. Yeah, I, I see that, that uh, Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi is saying that rain was raining all night, not just wind. Oh, and did we I, I before, we learned before it was not raining all, it can't rain all night. It rains during the day. Well, what we learned before was few things that a Abai- you're talking about what Abai said earlier that um that uh only if the rain starts in the daytime it can rain at na- uh, uh, into the night but here it says rained all night so so it, the Gemara said that Hashem doesn't start a windstorm a zypha um at night because then you wouldn't have the ability to to uh well at least we explained that that then you know would, wouldn't give you the ability to find shelter so hashem in his kindness always starts you know that we have a tradition and never a tempest doesn't start at night it always uh it's a school it'll always start by daytime 
that was the the statement. So I don't know if it applies to the rain. Here we're talking about uh, the rain, but it doesn't say that it started at night. It just rained all night. Maybe it started by day. Yeah, it, well, it says it day. rained all night and it cleared in the morning. Right, but it might have started the day before. Yeah. The main thing is the bracha comes when it's when it rains uh, when it rains uh, all night. But I don't know if uh, the same rule applies with the wind. The, the zypho was more winds, not uh, not rain. You get what I'm saying? It's 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 yeah, a little yeah. different. Okay, so um, so the Gemara the Gemara says that the um, pligi now there is an argument over here with Raphram Bar Papa Amrav Chizda. This argues with Raphram Bar Papa in the name of Rav Chizda. Dama Raphram Bar Papa Amrav Chizda because Rav Bar Papa said the name of Rav Chizda. Miyam Shachon Beis Hamikdash Leiner So Kibat Haraser. According to him, once the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, you never have a clear sky. Shenem, uh, as it says, Al B'Shamayim Kadros. It says that I will clothe the heavens with darkness. In the sack osim kasusam, and I will make sackcloth their clothing. So basically, um, according to Rabbi Shuvan Levi, and Abai who explains it, uh, it sounds like. This is something that happens nowadays. You would say such a bracha if you saw the 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 sky in its purity. And uh, Rav Rav Papa says it's impossible because uh, once the base image was destroyed, what we're seeing is not really the clear sky. Maybe there mu must be some there must be some darkness that's added to block the beauty, the, to block it because. Uh, one of the punishments of the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, uh, what's going to happen after the Beis Hamikdash is destroyed, is that we will never be able to see uh, until Mashiach comes. We won't be able to see the heavens in its purity. Rabbi, I want to say one more thing. Yeah, I see in one place it says Ose Maase Bereshit, in another one it says Ose Ose Bereshit, Baruch Ose Bereshit, Bli Maase. Yeah, I was thinking about that. What do you think? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> it seems that the Gemara is just using more of a stenographer style. It's just a short, short cut. Short. version. Yeah, short That's what version. it seems like. I, I don't think it means specifically, it means to be medayic or a different bracha. Yeah. I just noticed it. Yeah, I mean, Rashi over here, well, if, if there is a... See, I have a version on the side. I don't know if you have it in the Masurus Hashas that it adds the word Misa. So, oh, I, I it is Rashi. Yeah, if you look at the bottom, oh, it's, oh no, Rashi Tak leaves it out also, right? Hmm. But uh, on the side over here, I have in the Masurus Hashas that adds the word Misa. Uh, so, it seems like it's just uh, short, you know, shorthand. Okay, we turn the page yeah. now. We're on 59B. We have just concluded 59A. 59B. Tanarabana. This is the uh, source of every 28 years where we say the special bracha on the uh, on the sun. And it's um, Uh, it has to be. It has to be the exact day, and the the uh, the, the it only happens once every twenty eight years. So, Tanur one of the rabbis learned a person sees the sun at the at its tekufa at its uh, exact uh, cycle the during for uh, at its beginning of its cycle. Levana or the same thing would apply to the moon in its strength. in the uh, stars in their path, umazolis kesidram in the zodiac, in their seder, in their order. Oimer, he would say this bracha of baruch ha'isabereshes, blessed is Hashem who creates, makes the works of creation. Ve'emas havi. So the Gemara says, so when does this happen? That the sun is in its the, the beginning of its uh, of its uh, cycle. So mamar baye kolasim mishmanish nin. It's all every 28 years, Vahadar, Machzar, and then the cycle repeats itself. 
Nafla tkufas nisan the shabtei. It has to be when the uh, tkufas nisan, which is the the nisan, the equinox falls b'shabtai in the mazel called Saturn. Beorta in the Beorta de nagi arba in the uh, evening of the third day towards the fourth day, which means that it's uh, the night before the fourth day, which means it's a Tuesday night going on to a Wednesday. And when this happens, uh, then we recite the, the prayer the next morning because we, um, we can't see it at night. So you, you say the bracha, the rabbis established to say it the next morning. Um, so Rabbi Yehuda Aymer, so next Gemara then says, now we don't say the, this bracha by the beginning of the, the orbit of the other, the, the moon or the, uh, or the other stars, but uh, the discussion in the commentary is what the reason is. But the, uh, the, 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 what we do say is this bracha every 28 years. Um, and um, the last one was in 2009. So I'm sure many of you remember it. I think it was Erev Pesach. It's Erev Pesach, uh, yeah. 2009. Okay, the next... I uh, remember it because I was in Florida. Ah. And, and I went to the big shul and, and the shul in Highland, Hollandale Beach. Uh -huh. And both of them worked on the same thing. So. Right. Right. Rabbi Yehuda Imer Haraya Hayam. The Yudah says if a person sees the ocean, so um, you say a special bracha. This was Rabbi Yehuda's statement. We talked a little about this before um, because uh, it seems like maybe Rabbi Yehuda's arguing with the with the other opinion. So uh, the rabbis. So maybe you shouldn't. Maybe uh, maybe the halacha doesn't follow Rabbi Yehuda. It seems but in Shulchan Aruch it is brought. They seem to follow because Rabbi Yehuda maybe he's not arguing with the other opinion. He's just uh, he's just emphasizing that there is a special bracha. For Raya Hayam. In any event, the Gemara here is the source that every 30 days is when some of these brachas are recited. And uh, the, 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 uh, the Gemara says it about this specific halacha of Haraya Hayam, but many of the commentaries say that this applies to the other cases of the Mishnah that you recite the bracha if you didn't see it in 30 days, that the other brachas as well have a 30 day time period, a time frame that if you if you see it more often, then you don't uh, say the bracha every time you see it. It's only if you haven't seen it in 30 days. And uh, so the Gemara says, ad kama. how often, what does it mean occasionally? When you see it, leprakim, once in a while, what does that mean? So he explains, it means until 30 days. And um, and uh, I, I also mentioned there that there is a discussion. What does it mean? Thirty days? Is it is there thirty days of not seeing anything, or can you count the first day and the last day, and so on? Um, uh, but uh, the uh, seem seemingly understanding is that uh, we'd wait thirty days of. Um, a full period of 30 days uh, that you didn't see it. Okay. Bamar Rami Bar Abam Rabbi Yitzchak Reh Pras Agishra de Bavel. A person sees Pras. Pras is one of the rivers called the uh, the Euphrate, Euphrates River. So if he sees it on the Gishra, Gesher is a bridge, mm. Gishra the Bavel. If he sees it on the bridge of Bavel of Babylon, Aymer, he says, Baruch Bereshis, blessed is Hashem who created the work of creation. If you remember in, in, um, in uh, Bereshis, it talks about the four rivers. And um, Banahar Haravi, who pros, right? And anyway, so you would say this bracha, the bracha of Isa Bereshus, Isa Maisa Bereshus. Now, 
Rashi over here says, Kim lehu shalei nishtana pras mehiluchai al yedei adam misham ulamailo. Um, from the from the uh, from the bridge of Bavel and upward, no one ever changed the path of this river. Avol misham ulamata, but from there and below, hesibuhu bnei adam derech acheres the people. They redirected this river to a different path, and they turned it to another way. And therefore, this is not how it was at the time of creation. And therefore, after the bridge, you would not be able to recite this this uh, this bracha. Only from the bridge and upward could you say this bracha. But uh, if you go downward, you wouldn't be able to say the bracha because that's not the original creation that Hashem created it. So that's what Rami Bar Abba says, the name of Yitzchot, that from here and upward, you could say from here, Raya Pras Agishra, the Agishra is the lowest place where if you're on the bridge, you could say this brach of Isa Maise Bereshavidna Parsa, And he says, and now that the Persians have changed it, Shvar Ula'el, you can only say the bracha from the place called Be Shvar and upstream. Rabbi Yosef, Amar Rabbi Yosef says that it's not even. That's not Beishvar, it's actually a different place because they've changed it. You have to say the bracha only me'ihi dekira ula'el, from ihi dekira and, um, and upstream, that's when you could say the bracha. Because we're trying to say the bracha on the river that is the same as it was when it was created. Okay. Well, in... Um, the person sees now the other river. Get dig, diglas. Diglas is uh, the 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 um the brat uh, the, the tig the tigris tig, tigris tigris. How's it pronounced? Tigris. Is it the dekel? Chidekel. Yeah. What's chidekel? How do you how do you say it? Chidekel. Tig the tigris. Okay, whatever. It's uh, the uh, in in Aramaic, it's Diglas. So if a person sees that from the Tigris, Tigris, Tigris River, thank you, thank you. Well, it took a long time to get that. Uh, the uh, the um, if a person sees that river um, from the uh, bridge called Shabistana. So Aimer Baruch Isa Bereshis. He says that also you could say this Baruch Isa Bereshis, and. Um, But my the Gemara says, why is it called Chidekel? My Chidekel. So Amar Rav Ashi Shemim of Chadim Kalim. The reason it's called Chidekel is because its waters are very sharp, and Chadim is sharp, but Kalim and light. The waters are sharp and light, and therefore, to, if you take those two words together, um, um, it's Chidekel. Chidekel. And uh, Rashi over here says that Charifin Katmaya the Kalan Lishkov of Maznayim the Tovin Lishdays. He says that they're they're light in weight on a scale, and they're good to drink because they are not Machabid Machbidin as Aguf. They don't cause heaviness to the body, you know, a feeling of heaviness. But that is interesting. That certain water, I guess, is lighter. Than other waters. This is an interesting idea that if certain water is lighter than other waters, so then it would fall to the to the to the to, to the uh, it would stay on the top. It would float on the top if it's lighter than the other waters. The, the, Maybe when they say lighter, they mean it's it's not. Uh, not rushing like the other river. When it's rushing, maybe it mixes with sand or something. I don't know. No, the reason I, I bring the reason I, I bring it up. Yeah, no, the reason I bring it up is because there's a whole issue with a mikvah that when they can't get rainwater, the the way a mikvah works is there is a bottom pool of water that's rainwater, and they have a hole that attaches that bottom pool or side pool 
to another pool of water that's not rainwater. And they turn the faucet on and attach it to the mikvah and it all becomes mikvah water. <laughs> so if, let's say a person goes to a mikvah, you're not actually, uh, you're not actually uh, dunking in a, uh, in, in a rainwater, you're dunking in sink water that's attached via a hole to rainwater. The problem is, so what do they do? Every so often they clean out the top pool or the side pool that has the sink water in it that gets dirty because everyone goes to the mikveh in it and they clean it out and they add new sink water to it. Well, the problem that's mentioned and discussed in Shulchan Aruch is, well, what happens if the water mixes too much and then when you took out the, 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 the sink water, you're really taking out the rainwater. And it's, it's, it becomes an issue of your mikvah no longer has rainwater because you're cleaning it out and you're thinking you're getting the sink water. It's not necessarily true because all the water mixes. So now that I'm learning this, I'm thinking, oh, maybe we have a way around this. If, if the sink water, if they only put chidekel water on the top, then you would never have an issue because it's lighter so you would always just clean out the top water. The bottom rainwater would always stay. If only we could figure out how to have <laughs> light water on the top, then we would have a, a, a solution to the, to the mikvah problem that the rabbis deal with. And they, 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 they you know, it's a complicated issue. Um, in fact, one of the reasons the Lubavitch mikvah is top and bottom is to, is to answer this problem, that if the top mikvah is hot, it won't, it won't mix with the bottom water. Therefore, when you clean it out uh, and you empty it out, it won't take the rainwater with it because it's hot and it always stays to the top. So that's one solution to the problem is the, is the fact that it's hot water. But I'm mentioning here, if this is, if this is uh, literal, that it means that the chidekel water is, is lighter, that might be a, uh, an option of somehow getting uh, chidekel water to... Uh, to be used for the uh, for the mikvah. I guess it wouldn't be so easy to to transport it, but uh, it's interesting that yeah, there is hot that water lighter. should be lighter lighter than the cold water. Yeah, so that that is one of that is the solution. Because it's the same for air. You know, hot air is lighter. It's uh huh uh huh. Yeah, it's lighter than regular. Anyway, that is the solution used in Lubavitch mikvahs to answer the problem. Is that that they oh. use a, a a, a bottom pool and a top pool. A lot of other mikvahs use side by side, and they they don't. And not, supposedly, it doesn't help it if it's if it's the heat doesn't help in that scenario. Yeah, in hot air, the takeoff of planes is longer because the air is is lighter. Uh huh. Uh huh. Interesting. All right. Anyway, so it says the chidekel water is sharp and. And it, it is light. The waters are sharp. I don't know exactly what that means either. What does it mean that the waters are sharp? Harif and Maya. Maybe. In any event. Um, maybe the taste of it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. any, any, anyone been to Tig the Tigris River over here? No, one, no one's ever been there. No. Okay. I, just, yes. I have a question. You know. Part of what I'm thinking is, and I don't know if it's relevant, rainwater is purer than um, river water or tap water because tap water has all of this, has all of the minerals in it and elements in it. While um, I would expect that rainwater is lighter because it doesn't have any of the uh, sediment and other uh -huh. things that are part of the river. So I don't know if that makes any logic for anyone. But. Right. Maybe that's why the rabbis are so concerned that it will mix too much and it will yeah. come out. That's uh, interesting. Because uh, they always say, you know, pure it's really pure water. That's why they, you know, they capture it uh -huh. in the barrels uh -huh. to drink because it has not gone through, you know, streamed right. through the elements. Uh-huh. Interesting. Okay, good. good. Yeah, so it's an interesting point. Um, okay, so the Gemara then says, so my pros, what is the meaning of pros? Shamema parim veravin. Pros, the, uh, the Euphrates uh, 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 is called pros because its water is fruitful and, well, from the word pru or vu, fruitful and multiply. It's, the water is fruitful 
and multiply. I guess it, it has healthy, uh, has a lot of uh, minerals, I guess, and things. Um, it says here, Rabbi, that it's fruitful and multiply because there's a lot of fish in it. Mm -hmm. that's, uh -huh. what, that's what Steinzel says, too. I think you both have the Steinzels. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have the English. She has the Hebrew. Yeah, all right. But should they should they should match, pretty much. Um, yeah, all right. So that's a good shot that it's uh, that it causes the fish to uh, to multiply. Okay, I was thinking that it's uh, healthy. Um, okay, so um, then the they Russian say that they say that the ocean is salty because there's a lot of herring in it. <laughs> a lot of what? That's a joke. Herring. Herring. Oh, never touch this stuff. In, in Art Scroll, it says that it multiplies because it has a lot of seeds in it. So who knows? Uh, uh huh. In other words, it has food for the fish. Hmm. Yeah, and then it says um, washing in the Euphrates keeps a person healthy. Go figure. Okay, so the Gemara continues and says, um, yeah, what well, Rashi says, yeah, he does say, Toivin Lishes is good to drink. Shein Machbid, and it doesn't make the, the body. Um, no, that, that's on Chidekel. I'm sorry. Pros, Rashi over here doesn't say anything. And maybe there's other Rashis in other places. Um, Yeah, there's a Rashi that says it brings health to the person, Rashi and Chumash. And then there's a Rashi in Gemara B'chayres, Godel may a love Beloisha Mutter. It somehow, it expands even without rain. Hmm. It expands, it gets bigger, it somehow, uh, it has some ability to, uh, to, to, uh, Expand the the Pross River gets bigger without not because of the rain. Maybe it has uh, underground uh, sources, or somehow somehow it, uh, it multiplies. Well, if it comes from the if the river comes from the from the mountains, there is snow on the mountains that's melting, whether there is rain or not in the rest of the area. So that's the question: Is that how most rivers? How do most rivers get yeah. more it water? Usually start from in the snow? mountain. From the from the rain and snow, so yep. it, so I don't know if it means to be exact that it's no that it doesn't get more from rain. Maybe it means snow and rain that it yeah. doesn't get. Maybe it means both that it that it that it really it, it it multiplies from from its own source, not from the rain and the snow. Maybe, maybe it means yeah. the snow as well. I don't know. Uh, and some and some rivers have springs that huh. yeah. keep replenishing it as well. So that's so then that what would be why would it mention it? I'm just wondering, it makes it like it's unique that it's called pros because it has a if it had a spring, uh, is that is that rare that they have springs or is that oh, no, uh, most rivers have no, it just happens what the geological bed is of the river uh -huh. where right. it's flowing, right? All right, anyway, it deserves to be looked into. Uh, what, what, what's unique about pros that it that it multiplies on its own, the waters multiply on its own, that the way Rashi explains it in Gemara B'chayres, that it explains that it multiplies on its own, if really many rivers maybe do that and they don't rely on rain to multiply. That would be, we need, we need someone in our group that knows uh, geology. We need to get someone to, to join. Okay. Um, the Gemara continues and says, This is that the, the people of Mechaza are sharp. They're smart people. It's because they drink the water of, of, of Diglas. And when it, I, guess, I guess what that means is that our Gemara is saying that what it means that it's sharp is that it actually makes you sharp. And high for you. you. That it that it sharpens the brain, and hide the in this that 
people are uh, red in appearance, mishum demashamshi biyamamas, because they have uh, relations, um, marital relations during the day, and therefore uh, the children have a red. Um, uh, they they have complexion. a red complexion. Complexion, complexion, that's the word. They have a red complexion, and it comes from because during the day they're having relations. Um, like the redness of the day, Rashi says. Um, which which does have to do with the uh, uh, other statements in the Gemara that say, depends on what a person thinks about, uh, could, has an effect on their children. And uh, what they think about during the time that they're having relations could have an effect on the on their children. So if a person is having relations by day and they're seeing the the light of the you know the the light instead of having relations in a dark in, in dark, um, that would uh, could have a an effect on the children to be more red. And the fact that their eyes wander uh, is because they live in Base base uffel in dark homes. I guess in, the, in in that area, people didn't used to light up their house uh, with light. They like to walk around in darkness. Cheaper, I don't know. And uh, because of that, it says their eyes used to have a. Issue. It doesn't say that they're. Well, it might mean the. Ki- I, I wonder what it means. I guess it means the kids. The kids that, that they they're. They their eyes wand well. It doesn't say the kids. It, it's just um, people there. Their eyes wander to and fro, and um, the, it basically means they live in. It's because they live in dark homes. Okay, I don't know if any eye doctors want to look into that, but that's uh, <laughs> that's something that maybe the maybe there's some uh, type of uh, sick disease of the eye that maybe has some. Uh, Maybe this could be uh, give give some interesting insight into that. Yes, uh, Mordechai. Yeah, doesn't it sometimes say in various places in the Gemara where uh, somebody from Israel wants to uh, disparage the view of somebody from Bavel? Well, that because uh, they let, uh, they dwell in the dark land, therefore they have, have dark teachings. Well, just say it slow slower. They dwell in the dark, and uh, and so therefore. Therefore, they have dark speeches. Uh huh. Is there such a term? I don't. I don't recall. They have what? Dark features. No, uh-huh. no, t- dark teachings. That uh-huh. that when yeah that when uh, somebody uh, when a scholar from Eretz Israel wanted to disparage the uh, the view of a scholar from Bavel, he would say uh, because they dwell in a dark land, uh, they have uh, dark teachings. Dark teachings, aha! Uh-huh. Dark teachings, interesting, interesting. After we'll have to, as we go along, we'll have to find it. That's a. Well, what happens in a, in a dark house is your pupils open up in the eye. That's all I know. Uh huh. Uh-huh. To let more light in. So it, it seems like it causes the eyes to to jump back and forth, which I don't know if that's some type of a uh, uh, disease or something. Well, but okay. You know, when people are in the dark and they go to light, they start squinting. Uh-huh. They, they have to adjust, you know, they have to yeah. adjust their vision. Uh-huh. In the Stein Zaltz, he has yeah, the words, cool. their eyes are moving, he has the words constantly hey. because they live in dark houses. So uh-huh. the thing of the eyes moving constantly is because of safety. Because when it's dark, they want to make sure that they're walking in a safe place. So that's why their eyes are moving more, more frequently. Uh huh. Uh huh. So it doesn't Maybe mean when that they when they walk out of the house, they squint. They squinting because you know the light. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, when uh-huh. it's dark, it's constant because there's right. no need to adjust. It's when they have light is then the eyes, the pupils have to adjust for uh-huh. the different uh-huh. elements. Or density of light that they see. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. All right, we have different opinions of among the uh, among our students here. If it's uh, when they go to light that it uh, moves around, or is it in the dark uh, that they're uh, looking to make sure they don't fall? So, in any event, um, 
uh, we'll have to, you know, uh, we'll ha we'll have to uh, <laughs> back to money. live and learn. Well, yeah. if it's a, a less yeah. sunny area, the houses would be darker. Go outside. Know, if, if in Israel, there's plenty of sun. I don't know what's in Babel. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, in any event, let's continue. So the Gemara says, Al Hagashamim. The Gemara now quotes the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, For rain, you say the bracha of um, Hatoiv Vahametiv. Let's take a look back in the Mishnah. The Mishnah was on page 54a. The Mishnah said, A person. Um, on the Geshamim, on the rain, and on good news, you say Baruch Hatoiva Ametiv. That was the Mishnah. And I uh, spoke about two things rain and good news. You say Baruch Hatoiva Ametiv. So the Gemara says, Bal Geshamim Hatoiva Ametiv Mabarach. Do you say uh, for the rain, you say Hatoiva Ametiv? Vamar Ravavo, Ravavo says, Vamar Lav Rasi Satanam. We also some say that it was learned in a Mishnah, in a Bryce, excuse me. Me'emasai Mabarach and Allah Geshamim. When do you say a Baruch? Of uh, over rain, Mishayeti Choson Likras Kala. That when the drops of rain fall similar to the groom going to greet the bride towards the bride. And what that means is that there's a lot of rain that had fallen, that the rain that falls now is banging into a puddle. In other words, it's been raining, and uh, when when that's when you can say the bracha on the geshamim on the rain is when there's enough rain that the that the rain that hits that that falls it hits a puddle and pops out, and it and it and it and it and it um, uh, it when it pops uh, when it uh, re rebounds from the puddle it uh, it looks like it's coming to greet the kala, and uh, and therefore, it's considered um, a, a, a time. It's, an, it's considered enough time to uh, enough rain to say a bracha. But what bracha do you say? My mavarich, the Gemara says. In this, in other words, it's a continuation of the brisa. The brisa asks. So, what is this bracha that that we recite when it reaches this stage where the rain is uh, is uh, I guess I guess two points that it's enough rain, and it's also going heavy, fast enough. That it'll bounce back. So Rabbi Yehuda says, "I'm Rabbi Yehuda. It's a it's a blessing of thanks. We thank you. I'll call tipa v'tipa on all the the drops that you brought down for us." Rabbi Yochanan, Messiah Bahachi, Rabbi Yochanan would conclude this with another sentence: "Ilu finu male shira kayom." What we say in the Nishmas, if if our Mouths would be filled with song like the sea. Right, and, and our tongues would be able to sing praises like the like the hamoin galav, like it's like the waves and so on. We still would not be able to thank you for all the good things that you've done for us. It would never be enough. We. We would not, it would not be sufficient for us to thank uh, of thanks ad until tishtachave, that until uh, the uh, it says that every person should bow down to you. Baruch ato Hashem, Roiv Hahidois, blessed are you Hashem, with Roiv Hahidois, with many or most thanks. So the Gemara says, Roiv Hahidois, like Kol Hahidois, is it most thanks and not all the thanks? So Rava says, better you should say the God of thank of Thanksgiving. Um, Rabbi, that all praises, <laughs> all thanks belong to Hashem. Yes, Ezra. Is, is this the reason why we consider it to be a good omen? Rain, a wedding. If it rains, if it, if yeah, it it's rains. a blessing. Uh huh. A uh -huh. Interesting. Interesting. So you're saying connected to connected to the previous Gemara Chosan Likras Kala? Yeah. Connected to that, to that statement. Yes. That's an interesting thing. Yes. So that if it rains at a wedding, it's considered a good sign. I'm not so familiar with the with that state, with that concept, but uh, uh, that's interesting. Maybe, maybe this could be a source. I'll have to look it up. 
is, is we have to find out also like is there a is there a clear source to that statement? Is it a Gemara? Is it a Medrash? Does anyone anyone uh, familiar with that? Uh, it rains at a wedding. We we'll have to look up on. Uh, on I heard you. about it. That it's a good sign. Yeah. You have it right here. I mean, this is why I asked the question. I said, was this the source for it? Yeah, but it doesn't say clearly that it's a good sign if it rains at a wedding. Yeah, so why, it even, says, bring up, why even bring up the Hatan if that wasn't the case? Yeah. And this in the Steins also says uh, there are puddle, there are puddles of water on the ground, and the groom, meaning the raindrops from above, causes the bride, meaning the water from below, to splash. So that fits to what uh, what everybody's saying. That it's a good sign that the groom is splashing from above and the bride is splash, splashing from below. And it's a shidduch. <laughs> so, so actually, I was, well, Rashi says that the drop falls down. Um, there's water on the ground. And when the drop falls on them, the lower drop comes up. So uh, I, I, I translated it wrong. Thank you, actually. Uh, thank you, David. The, the, it doesn't, it's not a rebound of the original drop. It bangs and it causes a drop to come up. Yeah. Uh, so the bottom one comes up towards it. The lower drop. It jumps up. Yes, yeah, so the lo- so the higher the higher water is the is the chas and the groom, that's the raindrops from above, and that causes the kala the bride, m- meaning the water below to splash. Well, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's I don't translating know if it Rashi or I, I don't know if that fits Rashi. Rashi seems to say maybe the. The, the the bottom one is boiletes licrosa towards her, meaning the kala is the one that fell on it, which is a little sounds like the second one who came is the is the is the bride and the groom is the one below. Anyway, uh, either way, uh, it's it it is using this as an example as a thing. I think Google says that it's a it's a it's a, it's another custom from a. From a from other religions, he doesn't. It don't doesn't. Let me see if it says Jewish rain at wedding, Jewish tradition. It it maybe sounds like fertilization too. So the chasen kala, fertilizing and, and would be fertilizing. Yeah. Well, it's a consummation of a marriage. The, the man's drop would go down, the, the woman's drop would come up. Yeah, but Likrata is, Lika is talking about the tipa that's coming down. So it's it's not the female, I mean, it's it's the feminine form, it's, since tipa is feminine. Uh-huh. So it says no, Likrata, but, towards it. Yeah, but the, the term in the Gemara is that the chasen goes towards her, not that she comes towards him. So when he says it goes towards it, it sounds like it's m- mimicking the, the Gemara's term of a chassan goes out to meet her. So which one is the chassan? Which drop? Is it the top? Is it the one falling or the one that that's uh, that comes out? So, so, so the chassan is the drops from above and the, and the bride is the water from below that's splashing. Uh-huh. And and you think so also, Ezra? Okay. From Rashi, I don't I don't know. To me, the Rashi seems to imply the opposite way that the the chasan is, is the is yeah. coming towards her that just arrived. She just arrived. She just came down. So he's jumping towards her. But the one on the the one that's there in the puddle is jumping towards the 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 kala who's just who's just arriving. What about Tosfos? <laughs> A lot of times, if you don't find it in Rashi, Tosfos will say the opposite. <laughs> yeah, doesn't seem, doesn't seem, but maybe. Okay, anyway, it's it, well, maybe there's other commentaries. In any event, okay. 
So the Gemara says that um, that uh, uh, the bracha that one says is this is a long drawn out bracha like uh, the whole nishmas that we say in the Shabbos prayers. So uh, what seems to be a contradiction here, the Gemara is asking, because uh, uh, our Mishnah says that the bracha is hatoy vahmetiv. And the uh, Brisa says you have a whole long uh, drawn out bracha, and, it, and, and we're not even sure how to end it. First, it says Raivoi dice with most thanks, and then we say oh, uh, the, the God of thanks in Amar Rav Papa. Rav Papa says Hilkach Nemrinu Latarvai. We should conclude it with, with both Raivoi dice, with uh, uh, we say we say both of these things that it's uh, that it, these the God of thanks and. A Raivai dice, which which doesn't mean most things, it really means um, a, a many uh, an, 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 an abundance of things. So, in any event, the Gemara is, a, is it seems to contradict the Mishnah. So the Gemara says, but this is a, a, a contradiction. The Gemara answers like Kasha. It's not a contradiction. There's a difference if you heard or if you saw. And if you heard that it's raining. Um, you say hatoy v'hametiv. You say the bracha who does who is good and does good. If you saw, then you have this whole long thing that you say, which is similar to the nishma. And uh, the Gemara asks uh, questions on this and goes back and forth. But my time is up, so we'll have to uh, tomorrow. We'll have to continue. Zaygazot, right. everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye, bye, everyone. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Rabbi. Have a good day, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye, Rabbi. Thank you.